Today our recording uh, is on boosting your kid's immune system naturally and yours too. So if you're a mom or a dad or a grandparent, we're thinking about you too. Um, our special guest today is Dr. Helena Krupa. And um, Dr. Krupa is a chiropractor who specializes in holistic health care for kids. And she has her own private practice here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, she's very involved in the bionutritional care as a provider and the Hope for Autism organization. But what I loved about Helena as I read her bio is that she really sees the future of health care as self-care, and that's where she says it all begins. So we are going to be talking a lot about that today and how uh, we need to take care of ourselves, how we need to look at taking care of ourselves. And join her, Helena, Dr. Krupa, on this holistic lifestyle journey, which for her began when she was 16 years old working uh, for a local chiropractor in New Jersey. But she was very inspired also um, growing up on a farm in, in Poland. So her interest is broad. And I thought it would be fun to um, have us look at Helena actually uh, adjusting some children. So there's some images of her own kids and some of the children that she, she works with. So um, today we really want to encourage all of you to invite your friends as well as yourself to participate not only in this webcast, but to invite other people, ask questions. We have a little chat box um, on the left-hand side that um, you can just, uh, you know, communicate with us and we'll try to respond and ask answer questions, but also your name is going to go into a drawing for this vitalized immunity product, which um, helps to support you when you're feeling under stress or you're, you're not having good nutrition that day. You might feel like you have the sniffles or a sore throat, and one little tablet I'll put in some water, both hot or cold, will equal um, the equivalency of 16 oranges along with other great nutrition. So we uh, want to... Um, I'll make that available to all of you. So let us know that you were participating today and that you invited other folks to join in. So we are Shackley, and um, we have a, a Shackley effect that has rippled through um, the uh, the world and historically in the United States for over 100 years. So we're actually celebrating our uh, 100th breakthrough innovation year in the field of natural health. And as we approach this 100th anniversary, we want to really remember that Dr. Shackley created the very first multivitamin in the United States. And we, um, as a company, and the reason that we represent this and are sharing this with you today is that we are really committed to carrying out this legacy of his innovation in helping people live better lives. And this um, has been an answer for a lot of people. You can see that. Um, Shackley is not only nutrition, it's healthy inch loss, it's incredible natural skin care and environmentally safe green products that will make a difference as you begin to um, live this journey that Dr. Krupp is going to be talking about with us that is a holistic approach. So, Dr. Krupp, we want to welcome you, and we would love for you to share how the Shackley effect has affected you, has affected your practice and the patients that you have as well as your family. So welcome. Thank you, Elena. I'm so happy to be here talking about this um, with you this morning. So I, you, know, you introduced me to Shackley, and I'm really grateful because up until I met you, you know, I was um, well aware that nutrition is super important um, for health and for our well-being of our family. And I uh, certified in bionutritional care in about, I think, 2000 and mm, I want to say nine because I had some health challenges myself. And my daughter at the time was experiencing seizures. And as a parent, you know, as a chiropractor, I did what I could. And I was uh, looking for other solutions as well that were nutritional. And I was completely lost. I had no idea where to start and what would work for her and for myself. So um, I came across the Hope for Autism organization, and I got into bionutritional care. I, I studied uh, bionutritional care, got certified, and I met a group of people, a group of parents that were incredible. They, were, um, they had kids ranging from autism to just chronic health problems, and I was very inspired because, first of all, I got the answers that I was looking for, 
um, through nutrition, and they were just so inspirational and such fighters and um, always trying to figure out what was going on with, with their kids. And a lot of them had success, um, what they would call, let's say, recovering their kids from autism. So that was very inspirational, and I got into deeply into nutrition. Um, and I tried some things, and that did work for us, but I was never as inspired to invest or partner up with a company um, as I am with Shackley because some of the products and things that are out there on the market um, – you know, had different challenges. For instance, when I was looking for a multivitamin, um, you know, it was great and it had some pluses, but let's say it had some preservatives. And I didn't want to give that to my oldest, Kaya. Or they weren't gluten-free. Or, you know, they were super expensive. Or there was always something. And I, I tried them, but I, again, I didn't feel, um, completely convinced that this was the best product I was giving my child. So when um, when we met and when I started my own journey with Shackley, and uh, remember I lost the baby weight <laughs> with the 180 uh, program, and I started looking into Shackley, um, it just felt amazing to realize that this uh, company offered, of course, more than just nutritional products for a healthy lifestyle, but they were pure, they were effective, they were preservative-free. And the history of the company is, like you said, it's a legacy. It goes back so uh, many years, and there's innovation, and um, I'm just so excited that I partner up with Shackley. So I implemented it, of course, into our lifestyle, and all my patients <laughs> are on Shackley now. I mean, um, I would say 50%, uh, but I do suggest it to all my patients because it's easy um, I know that they're going to get results. I get results. My children get results. So it feels really good. Mm. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. So this, um, you feel comfortable because these products are always safe for you, your patients, and the environment. They always work. They're getting results, right, because of the Absolutely. research that are put behind the products, and then the fact that they're green, so no artificial flavorings or sweeteners or trans fats or hidden things, and we never have tested on animals. So those are those things are important. So, um, Helena, talk to us about what you would like your call to action to be to the folks that are on this um, webcast today. I would love to invite everyone to take a look at Shackley and why it is different. And, of course, you know, as you listen on, and you realize what we offer to boost immunity, because that's the topic of our conversation today, to go ahead and invest in your kids, invest in your health. These are uh, amazing products. They will get you results. And I'm so excited to share it. Mm, well, great. And there's your information on your um, on your email. So there's three common myths about the immune system. Uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I deal with this all the time because my um, I chose not to vaccinate my children, and I had to educate myself on my choices, obviously. And immunity, right? That's the hot topic as we go into this cold weather season. Uh, and parents, you know, the parents want to know what can I do? What can I do to help them stay healthy, uh, help them stay in school? So the first myth is that germs cause illness. Um, it might be, you know, again, it's a myth, so let's take a look at it. Because we do, what do we think of? We think of when you get sick, um, oh, it's that someone that had a cold, I got it from them, right? Because we know that um, we have the theory that germs cause illness. So in reality, what happens, Elena, is that germs are not the problem. The, the challenge here is uh, a body or a system that is weak, that let's say has toxic, is toxic or is not um, nutritionally vital. Because our immune system works 100% of the time and it, it fights the bacteria whether you feel sick or you don't. Which brings me to the next point. If you feel sick, your immune system is weak. So um, let's say Johnny spikes a fever, right? About 102 degrees. 
And what we think of, we think, oh, that's bad. You know, he has a cold, he's coming down with something. We try to bring the fever down. Um, when in fact, the immune system, by raising its temperature, is doing its job, right? It's doing its job. It is attacking and handling some kind of invader, a germ, uh, you know, a virus, bacteria, a fungus. And it is um, spurring processes in the body to, to kill it, to get rid of it, and to remember what that looks like next time. So if it's exposed again, right, if it's exposed to that germ in the environment, then it knows how to handle it and has uh, antibodies to take care of it so you don't even feel the symptoms. So if you're feeling sick or symptomatic, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, something's wrong. It may mean that your immune system is responding exactly the way it should to what is bugging it, right, whatever that bug is. Hmm. That's um, an interesting concept. The, That's something different than what most people um, have perceived in the past. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we can talk about fevers, and there's so much information um, about fevers and how fevers are actually important, especially for children, to be able to have them, right? Because then if we bring them down, then the body never quite goes to the process of handling that germ, you know, uh, building the antibodies, you know, the macrophages, the, one of the cells inside the immune system uh, literally um, recognizes that bug, you know, let's say virus, and engulfs it and eats it, eats it up. Um, and did you know that there's over 200 um, varieties of a cold uh, virus? So when you get a cold and um, let's say you get a cold, but your husband doesn't get a cold and the, and the kids get a cold, do you think everyone was exposed? Yes. Yeah, most likely, right? You know how it is in families. We share spoons. We drink out of each other's cups. You know, we, we, we share bathrooms. Of course, everyone's exposed, but maybe dad has been exposed to that variety of uh, virus before and he already has immunity, or maybe dad is stronger, right? Maybe dad is, be, you know, he's able to handle it without having so many symptoms. So symptoms, I like to say that I, I'm not sick. I'm just symptomatic, right? I'm symptomatic. Um, instead of saying I'm sick and let's say this process is not what is not innate to my body, right? I'm sick and I'm just not handling it well and, you know, I'm just symptomatic and my body's either handling handling it or not. And kids, little kids, always get blamed for spreading germs, right? We blame little kids just because they are more symptomatic because their immune systems are not mature, right? So um, whatever they're expo being exposed to, let's say with their schoolmates, you know, with families, and you go to the store, someone sneezes two to four feet away from you, the particles travel about that far. So you inhale that, and there you go. You're exposed to, uh, let's say, a cold virus. So kids, um, they are usually more symptomatic because their immune system is developing, and that's why it doesn't mean that, you know, they spread more germs because they're more sick. Um, adults, sometimes they just have stronger immunity, although this day and age, you know, that's questionable. Well, I love that concept. I'm, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. And I think th what we want to talk about um, today is how to strengthen the immune systems, right, for children and for adults so that they don't become symptomatic. Is that the track that we're going to be going on today? You got it. Oh, that's the track we're on. What do I do, right, to remove the toxins from my environment, give myself and my children the nutrition they need so their immune system can do its job. Right. right? So there and is a natural less. approach. There is a natural approach to this then. Of course. Of course. And so um we're gonna talk about that, you know, all throughout um the talk and I'll be making suggestions on which Shackley products um you can use to do, you know, to boost your uh kids' immune system. And you know, we'll take it from there. Right, right. So there's some things that we really need to consider as far as whether our 
we're at the right body weight, whether or not supplementation um, is being provided, you know, in our diet and how to strengthen. I like to think about modulating our immune systems and helping our kids to build a healthier digestive tract and maybe even removing some toxins from the environment that could strengthen the immune system. Any thoughts about that? Absolutely. Um, I... You know, all the where is the, the uh, immune system, Ella? Where is the immune system? It's everywhere. It's all throughout your body. It's in eighty percent of it is in the gut, right? You have um, cells that comprise the immune system everywhere. You know, you have it in your digestive tract, in your lungs, in your mouth. So the immune system is sort of a mystery. We think, you know, when you think of a digest, the digestive or cardiovascular system, you know where that is in your body, right? Okay, it's the tube, it's my stomach, it's my intestines, okay, it's my heart, my arteries. But the immune system is everywhere. So it is also affected by everything that we do. Um, if we breathe in toxic fumes from household cleaning products, it affects your immune system. Your immune system registers that through the lungs, through the nasal passages, through the mucosal, you know, the um, lining in your nose and in your throat, in your lungs, as something foreign, and it reacts. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So what do healthy kids really need? Healthy kids need rest. They need to sleep. Children need to sleep at least 10 to 12 hours. So if you notice that um, your kid is, you know, glossy-eyed, a little tired, uh, not enjoying the things that he or she usually does, you know that there's something brewing. The immune system is probably working on something, and you want to make sure that, first and foremost, they go to bed. They go to bed. For older children, um, I would suggest that, you remove the, you know, shut the TV off, remove the electronics so they're not overstimulated and they just need a good night's sleep. Um, and exercise, they also need to be, you know, stimulated on the same token. They sit, what, six, seven hours sometimes in school in these chairs and they don't get enough exercise and circulation and out fresh air outdoors. So we've got to make sure that they stay active and um, engaged. Toxin-free environment, home and school. Um, I know last time on our webinar, uh, we talked about um, how bleach affected a handwriting of a child and how that affects the nervous system. And, you know, and it was such a dramatic difference, wasn't it? Oh, my gosh, yes, in their handwriting, absolutely. And their, and their handwriting. Um, same thing in school, I mean, in the home, we have to make sure that the toxins are removed because, again, when we breathe it in, when we're exposed to it, the immune system recognizes this as foreign and it starts fighting. You know, it starts trying to handle this um, substance. And over time, you know, think about it. You put the germs and the bacteria and now you got the chemical stresses in, uh, you know, the toxins in the environment at school, at home, after a while, it's a straw that breaks the camel's back, right? Something gives and our immune system is weakened and is not able to handle, you know, most common things. Um, healthy diet from real food. I'm always surprised what people think real food means. <laughs> so, uh, not from a can, not from a box, uh, right? Um, that's, processed foods. Real foods are the foods that you would cook yourself at home and prepare, you know, free of additives and preservatives and all that. So, um, because those are most nutritionally dense and we need that. We're concentrating on giving the body what it needs so it can function 100%, including immunity. And essential nutrients. Um, You know, my question to parents right now would be, how many of your kids can take or swallow about eight teaspoons of sunflower oil. Probably none. I know mine wouldn't. But that is the recommended dose of vitamin E, right, the daily recommended dose for vitamin E for kids. And um, we don't get that usually from our foods. So we have to supplement so that our kids thrive so they get what they need in order to grow. And children 
are, um, they actually, compared to body weight, they need more nutrients than we do because their metabolism is faster. They grow and change faster than adults do. So they actually need very nutritious uh, meals and um, supplementation in order to meet that. Mm -hmm. So let's look now then um, at kids' overall health and some facts um, that we know are really playing a part in children's health. Um, Overweight issues. The number uh, of overweight children and teens has doubled in the past 10 years. Type 2 diabetes. Incidence of uh, type 2 diabetes is rising quickly among children. Asthma. On average, one out of every 13 school-age children has asthma. The immune system. Kids miss an average of eight school days per year because of health issues. That's stressful to parents, especially parents who are working, because you have to you have to go to work, you have to you know provide child care for them. It ends up um, costing you more. Physical development, poor nutrition negatively impacts bone growth and overall physical development. So children have certain milestones um, that they need to meet, and they have these windows of, you know, from this age to that age, the baby needs to crawl or, you know, we need to grow. And if we miss those, those usually affect the child for the rest of their life because then the body, the nervous system um, has to go back and try to deal with it. You know, in order to move forward, we need to meet our milestones of growing up on time. ADHD, learning and behavioral problems, autism, um, those are very dear to my heart. I have um, clients, parents, who bring children into my office, um, you know, with developmental delays, with all these behavioral issues. And nutrition is the key. We, You know, I do chiropractic as well with them to keep the nervous system clear of interference, but nutrition is the key. It makes everything work better. Right. And I think something that um, parents don't always consider, but that poor school performance, how they respond to tasks and to assignments can really be a direct result to their nutrition, whether or not they've even had breakfast in the morning and whether or not they've had any kind of nutrients or whether or not they've been exposed to um, homes that maybe have all of these things piled up underneath the, the, the wash machine and dryer or underneath the sink. So toxic home can really affect that too, can't it? Oh, absolutely, yes. Let's talk about that. Um, the, our next uh, slide is about living in a toxic home. We we don't really think much about what we clean with in general. Um, sometimes, you know, I do have more conscious parents that have, because they have allergies and because they have discovered that the asthma gets aggravated with the Tylex or, you know, the bleach in the home, they're a bit more conscious. The average American home contains over 62 toxic chemicals. The majority of household products are toxic and harmful, and toxic chemicals are not disclosed on product labels. Of the more than 80,000 synthetic chemicals produced since 1940, less than 2% have been tested for toxicity and carcinogenic effects. Chemicals are attracted to and stored in fatty tissues, such as the brain and the breast, and I prime targets because of their high fat composition. So if those things get into the child's brain, how do you think it's going to affect their development or their ability to concentrate? It's going to have a huge impact. Hence um, the slide on the uh, handwriting and how impactful that was for the child who um, was exposed to bleach. And cancer is the number one killer of women between the ages of 35 and 54. Primary suspects are laundry detergents, household cleaners, and pesticides. Wow, those are alarming statistics. And if people would like to go back and listen to the previous um, archive that you actually talked about the handwriting and children being exposed to toxic cleaners um, and then what it was like when they were taken away and other things were used, uh, we can provide that archived information for you. And and bleach is is a predominant one that is really causing havoc in our um, society, isn't it? Yes, and uh, I was listening to something the other day. I was horrified to really think about the fact of 
you know, what happens if your child does swallow some bleach? And I have little one, you know, Sage is one years old, so I'm always like, don't touch that. And, and we have cleaned out the, um, the bottom sink of the, um, you know, of our kitchen sink. And now I have Shackley products in my home, so I feel much better. But I was always kind of thinking about I'm I personally never used bleach because I could feel that it affects my lungs. I can't breathe when I smell the fumes. But most homes, you know, it's a, it's a very popular thing to, to use bleach. And then parents go, you know, in, with their good intent, they go crazy, right, in the winter because you want to kill the germs. You want to kill the germs. You You don't want your kids to get sick when, in fact, it's doing more damage than good. And so... I was um, hearing a testimonial of a pediatrician who um, shared of you know, some patients that he had little children that drank bleach. And um, that meant a long recovery and then complications afterwards. Like this, uh, one of the patients had to be fed through a tube for six months because of the burn, you know, that uh, ingesting bleach caused. And um, the other had lifelong oral issues and speech issues because of the burn in, in the mouth. So please, if oh, get these chemicals out of your home. We have amazing um, products through Shackley, with Shackley, that are environmentally, environmentally friendly and they're super effective. And we don't need to use these, these chemicals in our home. They're not safe for our children at all. So we actually have now some solutions, and I think um, as parents and grandparents, we might be feeling like, oh, my gosh, what have I done, you know, <laughs> and yeah. um, edu- we, we can't worry about the past. What we can do now is make better choices, and I know I was so grateful when I was introduced to these non-toxic cleaners myself many years ago for my own children, and what I found was not only were they kid-friendly, but they were safe for the environment. They biodegraded within 30 days. They were non-toxic, and they saved me money. And um, now the White House and the Vice President's Mansion are using the Get Clean, the Shackley Get Clean cleaning products because they understand the um, the issues that can be attributed to chemical cleaners. And it doesn't cost any more to use these kinds of products. It actually is much more effective and costs you less because these products are so concentrated. And not only does the White House use it, but uh, Jacques Cousteau on his boats uses it because it's safe for the oceans and the waters. But our dear Oprah um, also recommends um, the Shackley Get Clean products, and her favorite product was the Basic H2, which was the general all-purpose cleaner. So you can Google Oprah and Shackley's uh, Get Clean on YouTube, and you can see her talking about these products. One of my favorites um, is this scour-off that I use for the sinks, for pots and pans. It has a wonderful bubble gum kind of smell to it, and it is very concentrated. It's a paste. You use a little bit of the paste and some water, and it'll do a great job on anything that needs to be clean, and this is non-abrasive. And we have a little picture of the little girl with the bottom of um, Basic H window cleaner because now um, help clean your home because these things are safe for them. So any final thoughts on on this kind of uh, product line that's all natural and non toxic? I my favorite is the dishwashing liquid, the hand dishwashing liquid, because it's been two months and we are maybe uh, two thirds done. So uh, this saves money. This saves you a lot of money, and it is very effective. Just a few drops, I notice, like maybe two, three drops on a sponge will do a whole bunch of dishes. So I love that because we used to go through, you know, whatever the generic thing was, um, Ajax and, and Dawn, in, in about two weeks. Mm-hmm. So I know that um, the average family um, saves about $3,400 on uh, cleaning products if they switch to Shackley. So that's huge. I think that's amazing. I mean, what would you do with an extra $3,400 as a family? Right? Good it's question. a nice vacation. That, <laughs> nice vacation right. you can go on and provide other things for your children instead of using these toxic products um, that are costing you more. Right. So safe for you, safe for your home, and safe for the planet. So these... Um, 
these symptoms that uh, we have listed here, like bedwetting, persistent cold, stuffy nose, chronic cough, ear infections and problems, and even leg and muscle cramps and pale skin, dark circles under the eyes, uh, children that maybe have uh, poor attention spans, irritability, um, even reoccurring nosebleeds, we never even think. Could they be symptoms from food allergies? Yes, absolutely. So if your child has a stuffy nose, what do you think of? You're thinking, oh, they have a cold, right? Oh, they might have a cold. And you're going to, uh, you know, give them whatever you give them. But the deeper problem may be that the immune system is reacting to a food. And so we just need to address things uh, in a different way. It's very interesting, isn't it? Persistent cold, bedwetting. You know, I have parents who um, come to me with concerns like that. You know, why, why is it that why, what's going on? What's going on with the bedwetting? And so we look deeper into what could be stressing the immune system, and we address it uh, nutritionally. Mm, wow, that's really um, amazing that we can be looking at it at a whole nother level and not trying to treat the the symptom to get to the root cause. Mm-hmm. So talk to us a little bit about digestive health, too, because I think I really didn't understand until maybe several years ago the importance of the gut. So like I mentioned before, 80% of the immune system is in the gut. And it makes sense because think about it. The body in its innate wisdom would put um, the immune system concentrated in there because it's an open, it's an opening uh, through your body, right? The mouth and then down the esophagus and to the stomach. So there's a greater chance of swallowing or being exposed to uh, foreign substances. And so, yeah, the body wants to stay healthy. The body wants to be able to handle what comes through first um, before it gets to the vital organs. Um, so uh, things that damage the digestive tract are food sensitivities, especially gluten. And uh, personally, I'm gluten free. My my kids are gluten free as well. Poor diet, bad bacteria or yeast, uh, using antibiotics. So if let's say you give your child uh, antibiotics because they have an ear infection, that can damage the beneficial bacteria because it kills everything. Right? Antibiotics kill the good, the bad everything in between, and it tip, uh, tips the scale of good and bad bacteria, and then, then there's an imbalance. Stress, those those things can damage the digestive tract and its integrity. Effects of a damaged digestive tract is, again, weakened immune system. Why? Because most of it is there. Right? There's a concentration there. Inflammation, brain, and behavior disorders. I'm going to mention something about gluten just because it is kind of a holy grail for me in practice as well. So many people wonder, like, what what does that have to do with immunity or the nervous system? Well, if the digestive tract is uh, inflamed, for instance, it doesn't, it begins to look like Swiss cheese on the inside. And undigested molecules such as gluten they pass through that lining and into the bloodstream when they're really not supposed to. So the immune system looks at it and says, oh, this is not me, meaning this is not uh, broken down to the smallest molecule that I'm supposed to recognize and then use for food. So I'm going to attack it because it must be, you know, foreign. The immune system recognizes two things only. Is this me? Is this good for me? Or is this not me? Should I handle it? Should I kill it? So what happens then, you know, of course, the immune system uh, reacts and we have inflammation, which can affect the nerves, the brain. And when those molecules pass through to the brain, they act like they act like opiates, like heroin in your brain. So a child that is uh, reacting to gluten may have certain behavioral problems. This is how it translates. I hope this makes sense. This is how it translates. It starts in the digestive tract. Things don't get broken down properly because maybe we have an imbalance of bacteria. And then it travels into different tissues, including the brain, and it just messes with the signals. And that's how it works. It's super important to heal the gut. There's a lot of things uh, come from there. Wow. So let's talk about how we do heal that gut. 
Yes, let's get to it. Because <laughs> I think most so, parents and grandparents want to know that. They want to be able to provide the right things for their children and their grandchildren. So um, what's what's hopeful here, Dr. Krupa? What's hopeful here is um, nutritional supplementation. It's It's the key. One of the products that Shackley has, which I'm super excited about, is the Optiflora probiotic system. So this restores the beneficial microorganisms to the lower intestines. Okay. So it's, you know, Johnny has had those antibiotics maybe several times for those reoccurring uh, ear infections. Now what you can do to rebuild um, the optimal balance is to introduce probiotics. And what I love about the Shackley um, Optiflora system is that it gets to the lower intestines where we need it most and that it is encapsulated, right, so that it makes it through the stomach and to the acid that could then just eat those up and they get lower to, into the gut where we need it. Um, it keeps undesirable bacteria and yeast in check because we realistically – we are not going to – it's beneficial for us to have the bad and the good. We just have to have the balance, okay? So that will strengthen the immune system since 80% of it is in the gut. And, um, you know, there's small little pearls. I love it. I give it to Sage, actually, and she's able to swallow them because they're tiny, tiny little pearls that's easy to give to children. It's a perfect uh, little pill that they can start practicing, you know, to swallow. Right, and Sage is just 13 months old, so she does it very successfully. Yeah, yeah very, yeah. very important. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of probiotics on the marketplace, and the Shackley effect that we can offer um, families is that this is guaranteed to deliver those live microfloras and, um, you know, properties in the lower gut, as you said. So it's not going to be dissolved in the mouth or the throat or the, you know, the esophagus or even in the stomach. It's getting right to the place that it needs to so that it can flood and build and strengthen the immune system. And, and here's some examples of uh, who can actually benefit from Optiflora. So anyone experiencing these symptoms, uh, like flatulence, bloating, constipation, Candida yeast issues, those, those are huge among the children that I see, the candida yeast issues, and they do require longer um, treatment. Allergies, antibiotics, again, if you've been on antibiotics for an extended period of time. Bottle-fed babies, the best way to get uh, small children up until uh, their year old to build their immune system is to breastfeed. But if that's not a choice, then absolutely the baby needs to um, have these supplements. Irritable bowel syndrome, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, any digestive disorders, colitis, active reflux, steroid medications. So when you're um, taking steroid medications, like if mom for some reason or dad is taking steroid medications, uh, the octoflora is not just for little kids. We can, the whole family can get on this. Low fiber and poor diet, ear infections. Ear infections are uh, huge with little kids because they're still building their immunity and, and just the way they're developing. So if you know you have a child that has those reoccurring infections, um, ear infections, just try the probiotics and be mindful of the antibiotics because that is not the best option, option long term. Mm -hmm. So it's really just about going back to the way we were designed, eating off of the land as much as we possibly can, and then supplementing with excellent quality nutrients that we know are guaranteed to make the results uh, and give you give you the difference. And I, I think this is such a broad um, range of things from colitis to um, allergies to, you know, ear infections. I mean, just one little thing like that could make a huge change for um, children, but also for the, the adults. And there are some things that make people really, really happy, right? <laughs> that there's some uh, nutrients yeah. that can really mm -hmm. lift and give us more energy and make us to feel happier. And that's the B vitamins that are really important to get in context with each other. So uh, I know you had some really powerful information you wanted to share here about why people uh, want to take B-complex. Um, B-complex is super important because 
it is essential for brain and nervous system. Uh, and children, again, are they are just growing. They're growing. They're constantly changing, building new cells, building new neural pathways. They need um, the bees. And the bees are depleted with stress, um, sugar, high carbohydrate diet, alcohol, caffeine. So it, we really need to uh, replenish. And bees are water-soluble vitamins, so they um, are not really sustained in our body. We need to introduce them so our body can absorb uh, the bee complex. Um, bee complex reduces risk of heart disease, depression, anxiety, hearing loss. It helps prevent birth defects, cervical dysplasia, colon cancer. I mean, one of the first things, right, when a mom gets pregnant is get your prenatals, get your prenatals because of the folic acid that prevents uh, neural tube defects. And my suggestion here, too, would be not to wait till you're pregnant because, you know, it, it will take time for your body to rebuild and replenish. You need to start um, supplementing way, way before you, you know, you plan to, to be pregnant. And, you know, if that's not an option, then at least as long as, as soon as you know, um, you need to supplement so that baby, of course, develops and, and you get um, all the nutrition that you need. Right. Uh, it's and recommended for – go ahead. No, I, I, go ahead. I'm sorry, Dr. Krupa. It's recommended for irritability, fatigue, hair loss, anemia, brain function, um, all those things. And mom, postpartum as well. Um, yeah, we need to have a really good multi, and I would recommend the, the vitalizer for women because the baby is, you know, a lot of our nutrients go into the milk, we're feeding the baby, and we can, we're not getting enough sleep, we're stressed out, tired with the new baby, absolutely something to um, invest in postpartum as well. Excellent. So the uh, recommendations for kids um, are some nutrients that they can either chew, if they can do that, or swallow, if they're a little bit older. And they're going to be getting the proper um, nutrients, including the B vitamins for kids in the Incredivites or in the multiple vitamins. How do you make these recommendations for your um, your patients and your children? Um, I yeah, I recommend these and depends on how old the child is. Sometimes they need a little bit more. Uh, just, again, it depends on what's going on with them. If they do have sensory issues or developmental delays, we might add a few things to bump it up. But otherwise, these are complete and these have the recommended daily values. One of the uh, nice things about the multivitamin too, which I love, is that it's naturally sweetened with the xylitol. And xylitol um, is, you know, does not promote cavities. Um, it's actually something that can prevent them. So that's a nice feature that my parents like. And, you know, and it's complete. And the Vitalia multivitamin you can recommend for older kids when they can swallow. Um, but we'll uh, talk in the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about creative ways of sneaking those things in there because, you know, my Kaya is just, Oh, just have such a hard time swallowing uh, vitamins. So I got creative and um, incorporating them into, you know, her diet. So when we look at the Mighty Smarts, I hear a lot of parents say, oh, my gosh, I can't feed uh, the – I can't give my kid the omega-3s, you know, or the fish oils because they just don't like it. They just hate it. They won't take it. But the Mighty Smarts are – quite tasty. It's an orangey like taste and I haven't had a problem even with Kaya who's pretty pretty picky. But um so let's talk about them a little bit. And so this is high in DHA and omega threes for brain power. It decreases inflammation. Um and it supports concentration, memory, vision, and the the hundred milligrams per serving is um clinically proven to increase blood flow levels of DHA in children ages four to twelve. They're super safe. They're certified organic by Quality Assurance International, 100% natural, ultra-pure, uh, no artificial colors, sweeteners, or preservatives. So I would make Mighty Smart part of your daily supplementation, you know, out of that uh, part of that routine. But some of the things that it helps with are attention, behavior, concentration, impulsiveness, dyslexia, vocabulary, calmness, depression, because it helps um, the brain function properly and it decreases inflammation as well. 
Um, so if you have to sneak these things, and if your little one won't, you know, is fussy about the taste, you can always crush it. You can crush any of the vitamins, um, put them in jello, put them in applesauce, um, offer a reward for taking the supplements and the vitamins. And if it comes down to it, just, you know, it's not negotiable. It's something that they absolutely need to thrive. So, you know, if it was a life-saving medicine, we would make sure that our kids take them. So whichever way it works, figure it out and help them take it. And, and right. ask them sometimes for suggestions. You know, they sometimes come up with great ideas like, okay, well, we have to do this. We have to take this. What do you think would make it better? Or how would you like to take it? What can, um, you know, what can we uh, create? Mm-hmm. And with and 60% then, of the brain being just fat itself, it really needs those essential fatty acids to feed the brain. So that's why omega-3s and DHA are so important important for brain power for children. Yeah. And they are yummy. So there's another way that they can get their nutrients, and what is that? So we have to make sure that they get a complete balanced breakfast. And um, I can tell you from just doing the morning routine with my two little ones, I it can be challenging. Um, you know, it's that whole mayhem in the morning. <laughs> So what I suggest is including a protein um, shake into their uh, daily, you know, into their diet, especially for breakfast. It's super easy. Uh, You can create different flavors. You can take it on the go, and, you know, they can drink their breakfast in the car. And what's important about this is that um, they get the protein. So they start off their day with a dose of protein, which stabilizes their sugar. So they can concentrate better in school. You know, they can just be calmer, more attentive. Um, And our um, Shackley protein shakes have 23 vitamins and minerals. They have 6 gram of fiber. They also have leucine to preserve muscle. And I'm talking actually about the... uh, Shackley 180, which I started with to lose weight. But any of the protein shakes that Shackley has, you can safely use for your children. They're low glycemic, and most importantly for me, they're gluten-free. I always, you know, have to sift through these products, and um, that's why I haven't been able to enjoy a complete line of nutritional supplements because some some of them are not gluten-free. So this is definitely gluten-free. And they're yummy. They really, really taste mm-hmm. good, and they're very um, cost-effective. So a smoothie itself for a family is, uh, you know, just in relationship to what you'd have to buy if you're driving through a drive through is just really so much more economical and so much more healthier for everyone. So there's yeah. some essential nutrients for healthy kids. This is kind of like a review. Um, do you want to just quickly uh, review, review for everyone uh, what you've talked about? Sure. So in order to keep them healthy, keep them strong, to make sure that the immune system is up to par and can handle uh, the things that your kids are exposed to so they're not so symptomatic, right, so they can just move through it, is the multis, right, Incredivites and Mighty Smarts, the Optiflora, which is the probiotic little pearl, and the protein smoothies. And for emergencies, you can use Defend and Resist, which is a synergistic blend of echinacea and elderberry. And um, so I would actually rotate this uh, throughout the winter months from, like, November to March. Ten days on, ten days off, ten days on, ten days off, whether they're symptomatic or not, because it will naturally boost their immune system. Um, You know, when they come down with that cold, when they come down with that cough, sometimes it's a, you know, you're – playing catch-up, and you just have to manage the symptoms then, and you're not really boosting their immune system anymore because the bacteria, the virus has had time to multiply in their body and invade the tissues, and by then you can just make them feel comfortable. But, you know, you rotate it 10 days on, 10 days off, um, and they will do so much better. Also, vitamin C is super important, so you can supplement their daily, you know, routine with vitamin C. Um, it's safe. It's a water-soluble vitamin, so it's not nothing you will, you know, uh, develop toxicity with. 
And when they're symptomatic, school-age children from 6 to 13, you can bump it up to 1,000 milligrams. The worst that can happen with vitamin C is they'll get a little diarrhea. That's all. If you overdose, you know, if you had a high, high dose, maybe of uh, 3,000 milligrams. And I know that you're probably wondering, well, how much, you know, are the doses, for instance, for defend and resist appropriate for my child? And, yes, they are. So this is something you can give to a child under six years of age. Um, it's completely okay. Um, if you wanted to uh, bump it up, you can maybe double the dose when, you know, when they're not feeling well for a few days. But otherwise, it is fine just the way it is. And, you know, I love that Descend and Resist um, just to suck on. If you have a sore throat or a scratchy throat, it tastes delicious. The elderberry in there, you might get a purple tongue, but the Descend and Resist really does heal um, just from sucking on it. So, and vitamin C mm -hmm. is water-soluble. So, oftentimes, vitamin C, if you're under any kind of stress, which could even be, you know, um, emotional stress, but it could be physical stress, your immune system, you know, stressing. Um, vitamin C is so important. So, um Let's just kind of close here. We've got a couple more slides, and then we're going to wrap this up uh, and talk maybe about some uh, interests that people have for the next um, topic. But uh, let's talk a little bit about how you can help your kids get healthier. So let's just kind of revisit what that is. So keep their diet as close to nature as possible without going nuts, right? Um, just, just do your best and think not out of a can and not out of a box. You're doing good. Start the day with a complete protein breakfast. Again, economical and easy. I love it. Use whole grain bread, cereals, cold pressed oils. Um, the more natural, the more nutrients you're getting in there. Fresh fruits and veggies. And especially if you're seeing that your kids are coming down with something or you hear that, oh, so-and-so is out you know, for the past few days because they were sick, automatically get them off of the carbohydrates and the refined stuff and give the body uh, some real nutrition. Stay away from sugars and artificial sweeteners. Um, eliminate antibiotics by rebuilding their immune system. So, of course, the long-term goal is to boost your immune system naturally so you don't have to go into those um, sources, you know, to recover. And select a common-sense supplement program such as Shackley. Right. And you know what? I think today we're realizing that uh, supplementation is really a must. And if we're going to be uh, providing supplementation, we want to be sure that it really is the best. It is balanced. It is safe. It is made from whole food sources. So we have put on this slide some of the recommendations, Dr. Krupa, that you have given us over the last um, several minutes here. And uh, we have a couple recipes on here of some kids who absolutely love um, the smoothies. And this is just an easy recipe of just throwing something in a blender with either um, organic almond milk or low-fat milk or whatever your kids like, adding some strawberries, some bananas, whirling it up, and everybody gets uh, adding uh, some protein to that, too. So we have meal shakes for kids, uh, Bavarian chocolate and French vanilla, which kids absolutely love. But there's also a variety of different uh, protein products, uh, soy protein or whey protein products. And there's wonderful things for moms, too. So if mom wants a treat, she can take a cup of milk with two scoops of the Shackley Cafe Latte, um, which is their uh, protein powder, add some ice and a little bit of instant coffee, and you've got a fabulous treat and a great morning start. So you can be drinking this in the car if this is kind of a, a last-minute um, you know, thing that you're going to be doing before you have to head to work or get your kids off to school. And you mentioned earlier... Um, Dr. Krupa, about Vitalizer Women for um, for the moms and, the, and grandmas maybe. But if this is really important, <laughs> and we haven't talked much about supplementation for, um, for the parents, but I just wanted to let, you know, moms know that there is a good source of nutrients for them as well. Yes, absolutely. And, and one of my favorite things, too, that I lost my baby weight in about three weeks is the 180 um, uh, weight loss uh, program. Um, just so nice to know that you can do that in a healthy, safe, and effective way. Mm -hmm. It's the easiest and healthiest breakfast on the planet, and it burns fat, keeps the muscle, and it's safe for everyone. 
So um, our call to action. Uh, first of all, we want to thank everyone for joining us today on this topic of building um, an immune system that's healthy for everyone in the family. And Dr. Krupa, I know that you offer 15-minute complimentary consultations, so we want people to be able to take advantage of that if they would like. So Dr. Krupa's phone number, um, for those of you that may just be listening to this recording, is 505 428 9591, or you can email her at info at wherefamiliesgrow.com. Dr. Krupa also um, has a blog, drkrupa.wordpress.com. And if you're interested in exploring um, the Shackley products that Dr. Krupa uses for her own family and for her patients, that are now asking her, well, are you going to tell me about these products? Um, <laughs> she, you can go to drkrupa.myshackley.com. Uh, so I want to thank you. Um, I don't know if I introduced myself in the beginning of this call. My name is Elena Giacomin Dennis, and I am uh, and have been with uh, Shackley for 35 years as an executive coordinator. So uh, we want to thank you um, for joining us on this call, and we want to receive um, you know ideas of what topics would be important to you. So you can either email me elena.gd at comcast.net or Dr. Dr. Krupa at info at wherefamiliesgrow.com, and let us know what your interests are, because we're really here to offer uh, recommendations and suggestions for um, for you that are important to you. So, Dr. Krupa, would you like to close with a comment? Yes. Um, so, reach out anytime you have any questions. Uh, let's say, I don't know what's going on with my kid. What do you think would work? I'm always happy to chat on the phone and give you some ideas of how to, you know, strengthen the immune system and just deal with what might come up in your family. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and explore the products. And thank you, Elena, for hosting this call. And I'm just super happy to share. Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Krupa, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have a great, uh, a great week. And happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye-bye.
my immunity, you fix my you know, fix my little back. Right. This is a long term investment. Not okay, you know do business and I want to know. Right. But right. it's not really no. it. No. To expect that. I have mean, several other emotional diagnoses that people use them with care. Right. We just go deeper than the muscle. Let me take this out for you. 